Hey guys, JJ here, back again for another Saturday of Zoom networking. You know, the guest speaker we have today is one of the nicest guys I know. He's out of Pace Warby Sub 2 community. And if you've been on my calls before, you've heard me talk about Pace Warby. He's the leader in the country, if not the world, makes him the world on creative finance for real estate. Pace Warby is his name. His sub two community is by far unparalleled as the best real estate education community in the country. The gentleman we have speaking for us today is of all the 13,000 students in sub two, I believe he's student number two, as, as the saying goes. He's one of the early guys, uh, very fortunate to lead the way for the rest of us. He eventually started early on, started as a student, learning his way through real estate, became an entrepreneur. Uh, he's a father, he's a dad, he's a family man, he's a musician, um, and he's a successful real estate investor. He is the man by which um, the Lonza Method is named after, and he's my good friend, Vince Lonza. Vince, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great, JJ. I'm so happy to be here again with you today. I always love it every time we're able to connect up. It's always a, a pleasure and a great joy for me. That's why I got a big smile on my face today. Oh uh, yeah, no, the pleasure is pleasure's all ours, brother. We got we got a pretty solid call going on here right now. Yeah. Just love starting it. out. You know, for those that don't know you, where in the country are you located? Uh me and my wife Ann, we live in San Francisco, California. And we have lived here for quite a few years now. So we're right, right in the city, right in the heart of the city, right up on the top of the mountain by Twin Peaks, where the big TV towers are. Oh yeah. And I can say that you have an unbelievable, beautiful view from your house. You've seen that, right? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was fortunate enough to be up in the Bay Area several months ago, guys. And uh, there happened to be a meetup that weekend. And Vince says, why don't you join us? Yes. And so uh, I had the pleasure to be a guest in his home and see the view and see some of his awesome instruments. I'm a musician myself in the past. Vince is currently one. But yeah, beautiful home you have there. Um, how's Anne, by the way? She's doing here good. She's around here. Is Summer Ann, you in here? I'm here. Hi, JJ. Ann, how are you? Fine. Hi. How are you, JJ? I'm so great. It's always good to see. I love you. You know, when I met you guys a couple of times now, and the first time that you and I met was at Muniz's event in San Francisco, and you and I got a chance. Vince was surrounded by people. Right. And you and I got a chance to sit on. I'm going to talk to Ann. I know. It was a great friendship. Great, yeah. great connection. You yeah. guys are wonderful. I, I love you guys. And how's Liz? How's your lovely daughter, Liz? Oh, she's doing great. She's quite an entrepreneur herself. She's really learning a lot from her dad. They're like two peas in a pod. They work well together in the real estate. So we're real happy that she's a part of the team. And if you guys are on the call or watching on YouTube, Anne has been one of our guest speakers before. Mm -hmm. So please look for Anne Lanza's video amongst all the videos on my YouTube channel, The Flip Side Up with JJ. Mm -hmm. And um, I just can't say enough about you guys as a couple, as people, uh, for the community, not just a real estate community, but um, you guys lead by example, and I wanted to call you guys my friends. Yeah, thank we you. So, Ann, we're going we're gonna to get back to Vince, okay? Okay, thank you for Good saying to see that. you. Good to <laughs> see you. So, Vince, you know, for those that don't know, you're going to talk a little, everybody knows about, you know, the lawns and method, or they've heard about it, and we're all getting into real estate. But what I really wanted you to do is kind of let folks know a little bit about you. So you were raised in San Francisco, correct? So I was actually born in New Jersey, but when I was a little, uh, a really young kid, my father got a job out here in California. All of our family, my parents, grandparents had all been born and raised in New York City. And so that was where our family's uh, roots were at. I mean, the original roots are, roots are from Italy. My great grandparents migrated from Italy, but um, yeah. So everybody was in New York, and then my parent, my dad, got a job out here. We moved out here. I grew up. If you're familiar with like Stanford University, Palo Alto, mm -hmm. um, I grew up in that area, and then um, I moved to Santa Cruz, California, for four years. And being a musician, I was always trying to climb the climb the ladder of musicians. I kind of climbed to the top of of the Santa Cruz, California musician world. I was in a bunch of bands. The top bands were all wanting me to to join their group. And then I was like, I felt like a um, big fish in a small pond. So I decided to jump into the San Francisco music world and be a little fish in a big pond. <laughs> now, what did you play a multitude of instruments or was one your specialty or your focus? 
Um, I started out playing guitar. I still play guitar now. I play mostly guitar now. But um, when I was younger, uh, it seemed like there was always like a multitude of guitar players and not very many bass players. So I started playing bass uh, when I was about 17 or so. And um, and I, I really enjoyed playing bass. So most of my like professional music career was as a bass player. Uh, but I, I also play guitar and I, I play more guitar now because just because it's more conducive to what I'm doing. But uh, I still love playing bass. So I would say bass is number one, guitar is number two, play a little bit key keyboards, sing as well. So all of the above. Man, that's so fantastic. And, you know, being able to perform uh, is just a gift. You know, yeah. uh, really you fun. know, I, I, I played bass in junior high school and read really? Did orchestra, did the bow, the whole thing. And, yeah, I did all that too. Know, yeah, so I I just love music. Um, so you've been doing music your whole life. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I really always migrated towards music. I always really loved music. Uh, my dad also loved music. I remember times his family's just, I would have my guitar and me and him would sit on the couch and he would sing and I would play guitar together. So really cool memories, childhood memories that I have. So yeah, music's always been part of our, of my uh life and in part of our family you know just that something cool. sometimes we just sit you know my my kids are all musicians too so some i was of, gonna ask i was gonna yeah ask. they are they're all musicians too so sometimes we just sit around and just have fun everybody playing and jamming together so it's 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 a lot of fun oh, that sounds so cool so um music's been a lifelong passion uh mm -hmm. as you got from your teens into your 20s i i so you met and relatively early, right? You guys were met. Yeah, yeah, we met when we were relatively young. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, so when you guys met, I guess it was kind of through music. You're you're in the musical mm -hmm. environment when you guys met. Exactly. Um, as you move forward with life, and then of course got married and had the kids. What was your career path before real estate? What led you into real estate? What took you from your teens into like paying your rent and paying the bills? And what yeah. were you doing before you became a real estate investor? So um, I would say besides music, the other thing that I always really gravitated towards was business. And, um, you know, music was also a business. I mean, there was money involved. There was managers involved. There was booking agents involved. There yeah. was all those things. So, I mean, there was that part of it that I kind of usually handled for the bands and stuff I was in. And um, after, like, as when I Ann and I got married, I mean, then, you know, it becomes more like, hey, we want, we need to settle down, like we need to have some steady income. So um, I actually started an import export company with a guy from Shanghai, China here in San Francisco. And we started out like this is like literally this the garage, like, you know, we literally started out of a garage like this is not an exaggeration. Like I met him. He was in a garage. Uh, with a telephone and uh, a desk. And I don't even think he had a computer. He just had a telephone and a desk. And we were wholesaling at the time. We were wholesaling a lot of consumer electronics and tourist items because San Francisco's, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge and Fisherman's Wharf and Chinatown. It's a big tourist city. Uh, and a lot of tour shops that we catered to. And that business grew from literally out of a garage. I remember I used to hustle stuff out of the back of my car. I used to fill my car up with stuff and drive around to the stores. We were basically wholesalers, which which is interesting because that plays into, you know, my later real estate career. So I was I was wholesaling consumer electronics and tourist items. And uh, that business grew into a multi-million dollar business. We bought a 10,000 wow. square foot uh warehouse down in san francisco it actually still exists today and um a lot of the merchandise that we have is labeled lonza because i think when we were when we were looking for a name i remember we were we were thinking about a name like what are we going to call and it was a lot of tourist stuff like um hats and um t-shirts and luggage and backpacks you know all kinds of that kind of stuff that you would see in a tour shop and uh, we were looking for names, so we're, we're messing around with like French names and this, you know, we're trying to make it sound all very like European stylish, right? And so I think one day I just came in and we, after we had, we played around with all these names, I'm like, why don't you just call it what my last name, Lonza? Like, that sounds cool. That sounds kind of, you know, and so we did. And so it's they suck that stuff in the tour shops. If any of you are ever in San Francisco, you see Lonza stuff, that's, that's our, that's our company. So that very was cool. Yeah. And, and so we did that. Um, 
for a number of years that became really successful. And then, you know, there, there came a, a time in my life where the business pulled on my time and I, and our kids were really young. We had three kids. Our kids were really young and um, I decided to uh, let that go to just spend some more time with the family. Um, I actually spent some time working with the church that I go to for a number of years. And then after that, um, I started a media company called WYSIWYG Image Works. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. And um, we uh, produced CD-ROM, which I know is totally obsolete now, which is why that company no longer exists. And we also did um, manufacturing of CDs and DVDs, which is also why that company no longer exists, technology. Uh, but anyway, that that was kind of the path to you know, to real estate. The next, the next step after the media company was real estate. <laughs> now, you know, getting into real estate, I mean, we all get in different ways with it. Did you see bigger pockets or did you decide to be an agent or did someone hit you up about investing or what yeah. was your path into real estate? So I, I would say it was really a uh, very coincidental. It wasn't an, an intentional path into real estate. Um, I will say this and always loved houses and she would always say, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could get some houses and we could rent them out? And I was like, so adamantly against them. Like, I don't want to be a landlord. I don't want to be all the things that I am today. Um, but, um, you know, she just, she just always loved homes and everything. And so, and like I said, I always loved business. So we were at a point um, where we were making some career shifts. And again, I say coincidentally, because, you know, these real estate seminars that the um, educators have, you know, we saw one of those and I wasn't even attracted to the real estate part of it. What I was attracted to was the fact that Kevin O'Leary, who's on Shark Tank, was a guest speaker. And that's like one of Anna Mine's favorite shows. We watch it all the time, especially at that time. We we like we watched it religiously. Right. And so I was just like, let's go check out Kevin O'Leary. Like I like Shark Tank. I You know, I'd like to see him in person and see what he said. And his pitch was about real estate. He was he was working with a real estate education company at the time or, you know, rep helping them to, to represent them. And we jumped on board to our first mentorship, uh, learning about wholesaling houses, which we never knew about before. We never even knew it was a thing. I, I had a wholesale business in San Francisco, wholesaling like electronic stuff. Right. But and, and like suitcases and T-shirts and backpacks and all this stuff. But I never I never knew that wholesaling houses was a thing. So it was yeah. like a whole, opened up a whole new world to us, right? Like it was like this whole world of real estate and the possibilities that were there with wholesaling and, you know, and investing in real estate. So it was, it was somewhat coincidental, uh, but you know, all things, all things work together for good, right? So, you know. Somebody posted a picture of Kevin O'Leary in the chat. <laughs> That's funny. So you you and I have met through Sub Two and and um, Sub Two has changed so many people's lives, yeah. and it's actually you know for myself it's allowing me to to do what I do best, which is give to others. Yeah, yeah, and just try and help the community. You still the networking and everything that you do is amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just think it's really important to help people to get a leg up. And as we were saying before the call started, with Sub Two, we had twelve hundred people when I started. Now there's thirteen thousand. Yeah. And what any community offers really that, that sets it apart from another community is the membership mm -hmm. and the people. And like sub two's got great people such as yourself. And, you know, in order for one to really take advantage of the community, one has to get out of their shell to build relationships with others. And I, I call that squeezing the juice from the orange. Yeah. Um, and I've had the pleasure to meet Pace a number of times. And most recently was last Tuesday. He was here four days yeah, you ago. Know, that's cool. But uh, when was, how did you run into Pace? How'd you run into Sub 2? Yeah. Again, coincidence. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I do. I don't believe that nothing's coincidence. Actuality is it's fate. Right. But um, so in uh, 2020, uh, Ann and I had been involved in real estate for less than one year because we didn't start up in real estate until 2019. And in February of 2020, um, we were just exploring different things. We had done a few wholesale deals. We were mostly working in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, but then we were also starting to get more interested in like, what are some investment opportunities beyond wholesaling? <laughs> So we talked to uh, a couple people that were mentors of ours, that were people that had done 
a whole lot more than we had in the real estate world. And, and they were saying, you know, we've done a lot of investing down in Fresno, California, like you should check it out. So well, the thing about Fresno that's different is that is the price points of the house, because I think last time I looked, the average price point of a house in San Francisco was 1.4 million. And I'm going to say Fresno was probably more like 200, $300,000. So we decided to just take a little road trip. Ann and I went down there and we set up some appointments with agents. We were just trying to get a feel of the lay of the land. We set up uh, uh, an appointment with uh, a company that was um, doing some Airbnb stuff down there and some wholesaling and just, you know, doing a lot of real estate stuff down there um, to just go into their offices and talk to them and see what they were doing. Just so happens that that particular uh, day that we chose to go, because we went, we basically went in the day uh stayed one night then did all our appointments the next day and then drove home so we we're just there for a couple of days the one night that we're going to stay there pace and jamil were doing a meetup i've never heard of them didn't know them who they were from adam and so we're like hey we're going to fresno anyway might as well go to this meetup so we did heard pace and jamil uh, speak for the first time saw you know heard met pace for the first time um and i, I always say i wasn't you know, I was, I mean, I was somewhat impressed by their business, but I was more impressed by who they were, I was much more impressed by who Pace was, like all the stuff he was talking about, like it was cool, but who he was as a person, I was just really impressed, right? Like about his go-giver spirit, about him talking about squatting up, about his stories about, you know, um, instead of trying to squash your competition, try to work and cooperate together to make, you know, to, to further both of your uh, guys businesses mm -hmm. uh, both of your businesses so um i remember also like um i i went and i was still fairly new to everything so i was like i need help with this and this and somebody else came out of the audience and was like um you know i live up in northern california too like i can help you and we got to meet with them so anyway just walked away with this really positive impression i would say also kind of my mind was a little bit blown right because like this is not the, not only is this not the normal way that most people talk but it also isn't the normal way that most of us have been taught and what i meant mean is like i talked about all these other businesses that i had like i remember in the wholesale business that we had that um my partner was always trying to just kill the competition like if somebody um, did something like to to gain some market share, he would be ruthlessly like just he would just drop price or do whatever he could to just to just squash that other to the competition. So that was kind of the mindset. It really is kind of the mindset, right? It's like kill oh, yeah. your and particularly in real estate. I mean, real estate yeah. for the most part is a backstabbing business. Yeah, it's a backstabbing business. So, like again, you know, all that really resonated with me, and and just it was like. It wasn't what I've been taught, but it was what was in my heart and and within yeah. my you know me as, as a person like that. I knew like you know, and you're the same way, JJ. Right? We want to do things the right way, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, fast forward a little bit. March 2020, right? COVID hits hits California, California, especially San Francisco, and uh, you know Southern California as well. We're like completely shut down. So it it pretty much like dried up the business. In fact, I was met with a realtor uh, who's here locally in San Francisco and is uh, associated, you know, or knows about like Pace's community sub two and Gator and the TC community and all the communities that we that Pace has in his world. Um, and we were both saying like it was, you know, it was in our part of the country. It was like you couldn't even really hardly go look at a house like without yeah. you had to find like all these disclosures. You had to wear like you know, all this stuff and, and you could only go one person at a time. So, I mean, just imagine, right. And, and a lot of us went through this, so you probably can't imagine trying to do real estate and you can't even go into a house. Like it's like, and nobody, and plus nobody can work on a house. Like they wouldn't let contractors work. I mean, so essentially everything's shut down. And again, by fate, you know, Pace starts this mentorship. And we mu only thing I know is we must have got on a mailing list when we went to that that meetup in February and we first met him. And so we get like the announcement, like Pace is starting the sub two mentorship. And, um, you know, Ann and I were a little reluctant because we had invested in another mentorship and we had invested a, a fair amount of money. And we were fortunate enough to make back our investment. But still, we were kind of like, we, we kind of saw the whole marketing machine be behind a lot of these, um, you know, 
coaching programs. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you know, you know what I'm talking about. And we were kind yeah. of we were kind of turned off by that a little bit of manipulation stuff. But you know, with Pace's thing, it really wasn't about that. It was just like, hey, we're starting this and it it was, you know, reasonable. It was like just a fraction of what we had paid. And uh, I remember turning around to Ann one day and being like, Ann, I, we just have to do this. Like, just trust me. Like, we have to do this. And she's very supportive of all the time. And so she was like, hey, hey, I'm good. Like, let's do it. The best investment we ever made in our in our lives, I don't know how, you know, I would say it, it probably wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that we made, you know, I, I don't know, 10, 20 30, 40, 50 times. I mean, I don't even know what the calculation would be. Yeah. Um, hey, let me, let, me, let me ask you something. Yeah. I was talking earlier how, you know, I jumped into sub two three years ago. And I was like, it was about 1,200 at that time. You know, of course, now we, we talk about there being 13,000 in sub two. Yeah. Um, so how many were in sub two when you got started? Oh, when I get started, it's about hundreds. So I, you know, I, 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 I definitely was fortunate to be in the right time in the right place because, like, how that worked back then was everything was new. There wasn't this huge community. There wasn't these regional leaders. There was none of that. It was just about a hundred people or so on a Zoom was that call. All around the country, hundred people. Yeah, or? all around the country, a hundred. Yeah, I mean, there's people on the East Coast, people on the West Coast, all around the country, hundred total. Um, I mean. You know, at that time, not that many people knew about pace or the, you know, the sub. This thing, this whole thing is blown up in the last four years, like amazing. Loaded, yeah. But I mean, it, he pace wasn't like the public figure that he was. He wasn't, you know, speak, speaking on stages and doing all that kind of stuff. He was just like a dude doing real estate at the time, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's about a hundred people, and pace would get on every morning at five a.m. Uh, and he would he would just go, you know how pace is. He would just go, you know, teaching, answering questions. And so it was a uh, it was a great education at the time. Right. To just kind of, you know, get get be able to get pace's brain and learn so much from him. And so that was kind of the beginnings of it all. Of course, it grew quickly to like one thousand and then two thousand. And then, you know, in August of last year, it was ten thousand. Now it's over thirteen thousand. So it's it's pretty cool to see it. It grow, <laughs> yeah. No, big, it's yeah. it's phenomenal. And it's all, I mean, for me living in LA, it's always great to see a pace when he comes into town. And and of course, uh, you know, this video is now being shot in in March of 2024. But hopefully, not hopefully, in June of 2024. Like you know, a few months from now, we're going to have a networking picnic, and yeah. hopefully, we'll see pace there. Hopefully, we'll see yourself. Hey, I wanted to jump into your topic. You know, okay, um, let's do it. That's probably everybody's been waiting. Okay, here yeah, we're, 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 we're getting there, everybody. It's coming. Here, it's your coming. topic is just building cash and creative deals. Uh, so, why don't you just run with that? What 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 is the premise of that? We have a lot of experienced investors on the call. We have a lot of new investors on the call. But um, let's let's jump into your topic and uh, drop some gold nuggets for the folks here. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. So, yeah, I know we probably have people all over the board, and that's great. Um, you know, I will say that, you know, we, we learn from each other. So, you know, you might have something to to uh, to give into this topic. And we're always happy, you know, we're going to do a Q&A at the end of this time. But um, uh, JJ reached out to me and he was like, you know, I have a lot of stuff on acquisition, but I'd like to do some something on disposition. So we just wanted to talk about that today. Um, I guess what, what would be kind of interesting for, for me and, and hopefully helpful to you is like, if you were brand new, like, how you would approach it and then let's talk about like what we're actually doing today so that might be helpful to some of you that have done you know a few more deals and are just trying to look towards um increasing what you're doing you know and I, oh, i was going to say jj make sure you put on the ability to screen share because i'm gonna um i do want to show people i'll a click few that things. right now it is on whenever you're ready you have to go okay. all right awesome so, you know, fast forwarding to the start, right? If like that's used, like I've never done a deal, like I'm, you know, I'm kind of looking for deals. We, um, we started out by doing direct to agent outreach. Um, always, you know, good place to start. I know that's what Jamil teaches a lot. And, and then Payson is Elephant Challenges has been teaching that. So, uh, you know, my good friend, like for instance, Jonah Kirchin, that's his whole, whole business. He was a guest on one of JJ's podcasts. So if you want to check that out, um, just check out JJ's YouTube channel and you can see, you know, 
how Jonah does his business. So it's still, it's actually still a part of our business today. I mean, now, you know, we do multiple acquisition strategies, but it's still, agent outreach is still part of our business. So we did agent outreach and I would say we also did buyer outreach, right? So back then, you know, we didn't have a, a lot of software programs. We didn't have a CRM. We didn't have all the things that we have today. So buyer outreach for us was was a very organic thing. So if you're looking at buyer outreach from a very organic um, perspective, like you're like, hey, I don't have a lot of money for marketing. Like I just need to, to start building up buyers. And that's what you're doing. You're building up these relationships with buyers. And you know, we're, we're now we're specifically talking about cash buyers. We're going to talk about creative buyers in just a minute. Um, so literally what we did, and this is why, and, and it's funny because I, I know there's a, there's a couple people that are in my, um, my smaller group. I, I, I work with a group of, uh, maybe 20, 30 sub two students who, um, reached out to me when Pace did his cadet program recently. And so we do like private calls once a week. And so I was, I was challenging, um, that group of people to be like, Hey, if you have uh, if you don't have the resources to buy like PropStream or Privy or InvestorLift, um, some of these programs that we use for disposition, like this is literally what I did. And this is literally how Ann and I got our first uh, wholesale deal, which we netted $30,000 on. So let me um, quickly screen share it. We literally went in to Google and we typed in, we buy houses, San Francisco Bay Area, right? And whatever area you can type it in. And we literally like just went in here and just started calling these people. Now, here's the interesting thing. I did this with my group the other day. And um, some here, uh, I think if you type in like we buy ugly houses, like the um, home investors, uh, people are going to come up. So I was doing it and I was going through it and I was like, yeah, this looks like home investors. Let me call this guy. I did a live call. And um, I got in touch with a guy from home investors. And then we made an appointment Tuesday afternoon. So what I'm saying is, is like, even today, you can still use this. And I did it. I kind of did it just for fun because I can show you some other things we're doing today. But I mean, it's still effective, right? Like I made an appointment. I'm going to keep this appointment. I'm going to talk to this guy. There's probably going to be some great relationship building that can happen through that. So if you're just like completely organically like that and you just get on the phone and you begin to talk to buyers, you begin to buy, build your buyers list, you begin to build relationship. You know, that's what, I mean, that's what we're going to be doing today as well, right? Um, that's what JJ's whole thing is. It's like just building relationship. And so if you're like in this place where like, I don't have prop stream, I don't have preview, I don't even have the money. Like literally that's how we started. And literally that's how we sold our first $30,000 wholesale deal was networking. And I'm not talking about as much about acquisition, but networking with realtors to find the deal and then going up literally on Google to find buyers. And we just started building relationship. And I would say even to this day, that's rewinding now almost five years ago. Wow, that's crazy. It's almost five years now um, that we still have relationship with buyers that five years ago that we literally just found on Google. Now, you know, Vince, let me ask you about that. You know, you've, you're still in touch with these people, but is that due to in part to the fact that you're, because I know your heart, you know, is it that you really got a chance again to get to know them and relate to them and let them get to know you, that it wasn't just a cold cut business transaction. Absolutely. You know, JJ, like some of those people we've gone out to dinner with, we've had coffee with, you know, we, we and, and again, you talk about this and I love that you always kind of let, you know, point people in that direction. Like we just don't know about their business. We know about them, right? Like, you know, we know about their family, know about their kids. We know if they're married. We know, like, are their kids older? Are they younger? Like, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, like you said, it goes beyond just the business part of it. Like, you, you get to know each other as people. Like, what's going on in your life? So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's part of it. You know, we still do that to the to this day. We went out to lunch with a realtor um, uh, on Thursday. You know, a local San Francisco realtor just had lunch, just talking, you know, about life. And, you know, he was telling us about, um, I mean, he told us this incredible story about his, how his, um, one of his children was born literally on the bathroom floor with the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck. And, uh, and then they called 911 and the baby like flatlined for like six minutes, but the paramedics were able to be, bring the baby back to life, you know, and now his child is like 
you know, five years old and and doing really well. So, I mean, again, that's like, if you're not like trying to get to know people and what's going on in their lives and, and you learn, uh, you know, some incredible stories of just fortitude and people pushing through things. Yeah. And, yeah. So I mean, it's, you know, all, it's all part that kind of, of it. That kind of ties into one of my favorite quotes, which is, uh, don't chase the deal, chase the relationship. Yeah, don't chase because the deal may go. Even if the deal's a good deal, it's going to go. It's going to be history, yeah. but the relationship lasts forever. Absolutely, yeah. So um, again, talking about cash buyers now, you know your cash buyer is t- typically going to be your fix and flipper. They're looking for a property at a reduced price so that they can turn around and sell it. You know they may have different disposition strategies in mind. Um, I've seen. I've seen properties that we've wholesaled earlier on that we didn't because we weren't as aware of some of the things that can be done um, now um, where people would literally buy a property from us wholesale, just go in and clean it up and turn it around and sell it. Like basically what we call hotel in the, in the sub two world Um, or, you know, properties where people would do full gut jobs and and then fix and flip it. So um, again, organically finding buyers, some of the other stuff that Ann and I used to do back in the day, we don't do as much anymore, but we still do, we still do the meetups and we still meet, meet people through the meetups, right? We have local meetups. We still go to those all the time. We probably go to a meetup at least once a month. Um, we used to go to auctions. Auctions was a great place it, to meet buyers. Um, so all, all of these things are kind of organic nowadays. We have programs like Privy. We have programs like PropStream. We have programs with, like InvestorLift. We actually use InvestorLift pretty extensively. Um, I happen to have a really good relationship with the guys over there at InvestorLift. So now, Vince, you're talking about InvestorLift. What is InvestorLift and how does that benefit the real estate investor? Yeah, absolutely. So InvestorLift is a platform. It's an online platform that um, is really primarily used for disposition. Uh, InvestorLift has built up a list of uh over 5 million buyers nationally. And so when you get it, there's there's different levels of InvestorLift. But even if you go into the basic plan, um, it's really like a, a shortcut way for you to find buyers in your local area. So one of the things we do, if you're a sub two student, uh, you have access to this is um, my, me and a, a buddy of mine, Matthias Holden, on Fridays at 1 p.m. Arizona time, we do something called the Dispo Dial. And what we do on the Dispo dial, again, if you're sub two student, it'll be on the calendar. So you'll get it. You'll get the email about it. But just if you've never been part of that and you want to know what it is, we actually go into InvestorLift and pull buyers uh, for the sub two students. And then we do live calls with buyers um, and and coach people along on that. So um, wow, people, yeah, people have amazing connections. And we have a discount code uh, for if you're interested in it. The discount code is sub two. Um, you can get demos and stuff, you know, find out more about what it's about. So just, you know, I would say it's it, uh, to be honest, like it is one of the primary things that assists us with disposition today. Like I know I talked earlier about like when we first started, everything was organic and, you know, and me doing our thing. But now, you know, as you depending on where you're at in your business, um, you're going to build your business. This It's probably it's probably not a tool if you've never done a deal, but it probably is a tool if you're doing a couple of deals and you're trying to increase your business. It would definitely be a valuable tool for that. I mean, I, I would just be straightforward and honest. Like if you've never done a deal, like I probably wouldn't run out and buy investor lift unless you know you feel like it's going to be beneficial to you but if you're doing some deals and you want to kind of increase your business and, and increase your uh, ability to quickly um get together with um uh, buyers in your in your um market this is definitely a great tool so I, I posted that in the chat and uh and then I posted the um this, the code is simply sub two S U B T T O. So, all right, let's uh, let's talk a little bit because I know we also want to do some networking here this afternoon. So, you know, Vince, we've got new people on the call. We've got experienced people on the call. We've got new people watching on YouTube. Experienced people watching on YouTube, and a lot of people are like creative finance. What's what's creative finance, and versus cash buying? Could you give it a really short? Yeah, kind of difference between what is the cash? What is it, what is it buying with cash? Versus buying as a as a creative deal, absolutely, yeah. So I mean, the cash deal is uh, exactly what you would think it is. It's it's you're you know, you're buying a property for cash, and typically, from the seller's perspective, um, 
and from the buyer's perspective as well, you know, um, you're working on getting that price down as low as possible. Now the seller is going to be in a position where, you know, they're just going to maybe be in a desperate situation for cash or, um, you know, their property is extremely tore up. And so, you know, we, we find out from the seller's perspective, what's the motivation. We talk about that all the time, but essentially you're buying money, you're buying a property for cash. Now, when we say cash, doesn't always necessarily mean I got to have five hundred thousand dollars in my bank account to buy this property, but you're you're you know you could work with a hard money lender or you could work with a private money lender, but essentially you're going in and buying this property for cash. And when we talk about creative finance, I mean there's a number of different things, but typically um, it's going to be one of two things or a combination of those two. Either we're going to be buying the property subject to the existing mortgage, which means the existing mortgage stays in place. And then we simply take over those mortgage payments. The existing mortgage stays in the seller's name. It stays with the seller's bank. And we simply just take over those payments. So um, let's say, for instance, that we, you know, we bought that $500,000 property. Um, however, you know, the, per the, guy, the person's mortgage, the seller's mortgage uh, has a $450,000 balance on it. And uh, they're they're saying they're willing to say, hey, you know, give me ten thousand dollars and take over my mortgage payments. I mean, essentially, we would have then have bought that house for ten thousand uh, dollars, at least cash out of our pocket. The other way is to do it is with a seller finance, and that's when a seller owns a house free and clear. And essentially, then the seller can become the bank. I mean, you just think of it of it in those terms. Like, just say if you owned your house that you're in now today, free and clear, right? You owe no debt on it, right? And you're like, all of a sudden, like, say for me, like, I was like, okay, and we're going to move to Atlanta because that's where one of our sons lives that we want to just move out there. Plus, we can buy like five times the house we can buy here in California. I'm not saying we're going to do that. For those of you that are in Atlanta, I'd love to come and visit you, but plan on staying in California. Um, we could, we if we wanted to with our house, if, if, if we owned it free and clear, we could say, you know, rather than um, selling this on the open market, um, and having to pay the capital gains tax and all the other things that we'd have to uh, get because we have quite a bit of um, equity now in the property because it's San Francisco and the appreciation has gone up quite a bit in the last few years. And we could say, why don't we why don't we just sell or finance this house? Let's find a buyer that'll buy this house from us at our price. We'll we'll give them, let's say we'll give them a, a loan at 8% interest rate, amortized over 30 years, and we'll get all the advantages of of these payments and that'll be an income for us so again that would be seller finance and those those things are creative finance as opposed to cash so again cash is simply like you're buying the home mm -hmm. this is the price the house is five hundred thousand dollars you got to come up with five hundred thousand dollars whether you got that in your bank account or whether you're going to get a private money lender or a hard money lender you're going to at the end of the day the seller is going to receive the five hundred thousand dollars in cash for the property and then the other thing is creative, like, again, where we do it subject to taking over the existing mortgage payments or a seller finance where we work out something with a seller, you know, hey, Mr. Seller, like, you know, uh, I'll pay, you know, let's 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 work out a 5% interest rate and, you know, I'll amortize this over 30 years and, you know, whatever those terms are. So, yeah, so that's the basic um, that's the basic difference between cash and creative, you know, and like there I said, go. we're also cash and creative buyers are also a little bit different, a little, little bit different animal. So. And, and when we talk about creative, there's a variety of ways of doing creative as you just, just, just uh, described. But um, I know from my prior education group before sub two, they were mm -hmm. talking about, you know, paying cash or leveraging debt. And of course, when we're yeah. leveraging debt, we're using a private money lender, a hard money lender, uh, as well as a couple, a couple other options. So leveraging debt is also considered part of a creative finance. Yeah, leveraging debt. I mean, in whatever way that you can leverage debt, I mean, that's definitely something that we do in our world. Um, you know, we have private money lenders, and um, if you want to become one of our private money lenders, just reach out to me. Uh, but also, yeah, so we, we definitely leverage debt because it allows you to do so much more, right? Like, you know, you're limited... You know, I would suppose that probably most of us on, on this call, including myself at this point in time, you know, have limited resources. So we leverage um, debt to try to, you know, uh, acquire more real estate or to do fix and flips or whatever. Yeah. Justin Kramer, you are on with Vince Lanza. What's your question? 
Hey, first of all, thank you, Vance, for for being here and sharing your wisdom with us. And JJ, thank you as well. This is amazing. Um, oh, also, we we need to jam, Vince. We yeah. Jam. What, do you, what do you play? I play drums. I literally have my practice pad like right next to me. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> Definitely, we need. Um, to yeah. Like, well, the next time I'm up in San Francisco, and we do you have drums at your house by any chance? Uh, I don't have a drum set right okay. now. All right. Well, I'll we bring can, my can, bring my bongo drum. Okay. Yeah, we can figure something out. I, <laughs> I have a couple of friends that probably have drum sets. Or there we go. There we go. Um. So I'm I'm big on like backstory. I I would really love to hear about that first deal you got, and, oh, and kind of what that looked like for you guys. Because was it like, for example, was it just you? calling buyers and then you just found people who were listing properties and put those two people together and jv'd with the buyer or like how did that work for you guys yeah yeah I, i'd be happy to tell that story so you know when we first started out i was talking about like the event we went to with kevin o'leary and then we joined this other mentorship and that other mentorship was primarily just teaching about wholesaling so what ann and i started doing is we just started networking together with realtors and one of the things that we would do uh, would we we we'd go to open houses and we try to find we try to find those open houses that were distressed properties, right? Because we're like that's what we're looking for. So let's not let's not go to the open house. It's the brand new, just recently remodeled, all updated. We go to the ones that are like let's go to the jacked up houses that are having open houses. So through that we met a realtor and um, a, a couple of weeks later she called us up. So we just kind of told her what we were doing and what we're looking for. And she called us up and there was this property in San Francisco that was built in the early 1900s, um, looked like it hadn't been changed since about 1940. Wow. And the situation was again, you know, motivation of the seller, right? The motivation of the seller was that he um, had to uh, be put into a um, convalescent home and he was in his 80s and he didn't have the finances except what was in his house. And he he needed the money like yesterday, right? So it was like us and one other person that was bidding on this. And so we won the bid. We were able to uh, get the house, which is crazy because it's San Francisco, 900000 yeah. for this yeah. house. Um, and then what we did was like um, we just started. I don't even think at the time we were doing like Facebook groups or anything i mean like facebook marketplace but we put it in like craigslist and you know just reached out and like i said you know we had built up some buyers so we were like emailing those buyers mm -hmm. um just from relationships that we had done from phone calls and stuff mm -hmm. and what you know what what you what i what i always found i mean still is true to this day to some extent is like anytime that you have a deal it always just expands your network yeah so yeah. You know, people found out about it. People told other people, you know, we got on phone calls and stuff. And then we did like a couple like kind of open house events where we just had a bunch of the buyers come in and we found a buyer. Oh, no. Then this other guy um, introduced us to the buyer. So one, one of the guys that we had met introduced us to this other buyer and that other buyer ended up buying it. And so we contracted for nine hundred thousand. We sold it for nine thirty. We got thirty thousand dollars assignment fee. The crazy thing is, he turned around and literally just only cleaned it up. He didn't do any remodeling. He just cleaned the property up and he sold it for a hundred thousand dollars over what we had. Wow! Wow! That's so like amazing. that's what I was saying earlier. Like we didn't know. I mean, we probably wouldn't have had the resources, and we were happy, right? Yeah. But, I mean. Just, he basically just wholetailed the deal like and wow. he used the same realtor that had that had worked with us on on our end represented us as a buyer when he yeah. sold the property he used her so she got a uh, double commission on it as well oh he used the same agent he used the he same used the real estate agent oh wow okay that's smart um gave her a little piece of the pie that's that's yeah. good um so I guess my question is then it, like you got it locked up under you guys got it locked up under contract a yeah. nine hundred thousand dollar home like you didn't have that money at that point, did you? You didn't have nine hundred thousand dollars in the bank. No, no, but I mean, we wholesale the deal, right? We wholesale it, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's why I was. That's yeah, why I was yeah. so we wholesale the deal. I mean, no, we didn't have access to any of that stuff back then. So did you do like a? Well, we don't need. To, I, I, I would love to dig more into this, but um, yeah, that's that's amazing. That's amazing, and uh, so and I'm assuming all of those contacts that you made during that during that deal, you still do business with all of those people, right? A lot of them we still to this know. Day, yeah.
That's amazing. Well, thank you, man. That that's that's a that's an awesome story. Mark Presswood and Yvonne, you are on with Vince Lanza. What's your question? Thank you, JJ. Appreciate it. Hey, JJ. Uh, Justin stole my damn question. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Sorry. Well, you can think of another one if you want to. <laughs> I mean, when you when you started, you said you started in nineteen. Was that when you really just started real estate investing, or you've been in the game a minute, or what? No, we just started in twenty nineteen. We didn't know anything, like literally, like honestly, yes. honestly, like when I found out that you could wholesale houses, it was like. I remember turning around to my wife and it's like, really? Like, that's actually a thing? Like, I knew nothing. I mean, I understood wholesaling because I had had a wholesaling. So I understood, like, you know, we bought product from China and we bought product from local, you know, uh, manufacturers here in the U.S. And then we buy it. I mean, I don't know. Just say we would buy whatever. We would buy a, a, a cordless phone for, like, whatever. The, I don't even remember the numbers. For $50. <laughs> and then we would wholesale it for, like, $55 and those guys would sell it for a hundred bucks to the end buyer. So I, I, I got that concept, but I literally knew nothing about that. That was a thing that you could do in real estate. So yeah, in 2019, like we were so green. I remember being so stinking scared out of my pants. The first deal we did, because I was like, is this actually going to happen? Is this actually going to go through? Right. And then we also, you know, there was some, some earnest money involved and, you know, we know in wholesaling, like you've got this inspection period, and you have to get the deal sold, otherwise the the, the earnest money exempt, uh, becomes non-refundable. So we were so concerned, like we need to get the earnest money, like th we can't lose this money. And then I, I was just like, we were, I was freaking out. Like it all, it all worked out in the end. But like, uh, you know, thank God that we had some people, you know, uh, that that coached us through it, you know. But I remember even the coach that that we were working with. He was got irritated with me because he was like, just do what I tell you to do. It's going to be okay. <laughs> so. I uh, I feel you on that. I mean, we started in 17, and the guru that we went to taught us to do remote flipping. So we are doing a flip in South Carolina. Right. By the seat of our pants, it was our first deal. Uh, we wrote about 30 offers. We landed this one. It was a really tight deal. Uh, we jumped in all all hands and and 401k and the whole nine, and I said, hey, if we can make one dollar, we know that the system works, you know. And yeah. then we got to find out why we only made a dollar. But hey, you know what? Seventeen thousand bucks in ten hours of phone time is not too shabby, you know. It's cool. Um, but uh, no fortune builders. I went I went there too, and it, it's uh, that enlightened me about the whole credit game. I was just like, you know. They're hiding this stuff in the schools and everything with this is you got to get to these seminars and meetups and just find great people like yeah. it's it's street knowledge. You know, I love the hustle, though, man. Appreciate you. And we almost got that deal together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're gonna, we're, we're, let's get another one going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uncle. Uncle. All right. All right. Thank you. Hey, Mark, thank you so much. Yeah. Vince, Mark and you, uh, Yvonne are also down here in Southern California. So we'll, right. we'll have, we'll have, we'll have a photo line for you when you get here. Mark, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you. The Jeffrey Wind Windham. Jeffrey, how are you? Hey, Jeffrey. I'm doing great. Yourself? Great. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Uh, what's your question for Uncle Vince? Yes. Um, so I am in the San Francisco Bay Area also. <laughs> it was amazing when you said that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to know right now, are you doing subject twos right now? Are you still doing uh, the wholesaling? I'm doing subject twos. We uh, we're working on a subject two deal in San Jose. Okay. Um, we recently did a subject two deal in Concord, California. We did another one in Roseville, California, which is right in the Sacramento area. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, those those deals are happening uh, for us up here, even in this area. I know yesterday I was on a call. Um, well, we're working on one in Stockton. We're working on actually two in Stockton, California. But I was on a call with a couple people from our team where we're working on something. Uh, so, yeah. So I, I would say now uh we probably do more creative deals than we do cash deals you know yeah. and i mean that part of that is probably just being part of the whole sub two pace morby world and and also the marketing things that we do and 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 stuff you know we're i mean we still we still do cash deals but you know 
we, we run into a lot of um, and do a lot of creative deals. So, so how are you advertising for the subject to we do the acquisition uh, customers? Um, we do so. We do a couple of different things. I mean, part of it is, um, part of it is networking. To be honest with you, it's just you know putting ourselves out there as like, uh, you know, people that do these kind of deals, and then because we have done a lot of them and we now have a pretty good track, track record and understand how they work. And then you know, my wife, Anne is an in-house transaction coordinator. So she knows how to do all the contracts and, you know, she has a relationship with all the title companies that are good at doing this. Um, we do that. Then the other thing we do that is pretty effective in terms of getting creative deals is we market to uh, people with low equity in their property because what's happening there is a lot of those people at the end of the day um, who are trying to sell their homes would end up having to, you know, either make very little or nothing or actually pay money um, to sell their house because by the time they have to pay their, their share of the closing costs and the aging commission and whatever other costs they're going to have, and they have very low equity um, in there's some, times when we run into people that are like going to literally have to write a check to sell their house. So in that case, sometimes it makes sense for them to go subject to, because like maybe we could, instead of them writing a check, we can try to get them a little bit of money in their pocket. Yes. So, so that's also like a, a good, we, we do, we have some automated offers like where we're able to send out like a hundred plus offers every day, like on low equity. Wow. So Okay, you're using that. You're using some type of program. I take it as that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, we're you were using. Uh, we hook. We connected up with a guy that lives in South America. That's a really tech guy, and so we were working with him, and we're still perfecting some things in the system. But um, you know, it's um, it's it's been working really effectively for us. So it's and we only just started doing that this year, and I think. At some point, I think we're going to make that more public, but we're still trying to tweak it so that when we do make it more public, that it's uh, we got all the the kinks worked out. <laughs> well, I'll try to keep up with you. So when you make it public, yes, I'll be yeah, the first. Me Hit me up. I put my contact information in there. Uh, just okay. for everybody, like if a good way to um, to connect up, like just to kind of be be uh, connected up with like what's going on with me and. And all these kind of things that we're talking about is to okay. click the link there. Some of you are already in there because, I, you know, we sent out an email. This, For instance, this morning, JJ, we sent out an email to um, the people in our network, ask, inviting them into this. And I know I see, you know, a lot of them in here today. Um, but it's salonspartners.com backslash Vincent. All that does is um, I it just gives... We don't do a lot of marketing. Um, we don't. I don't really market things, but I just tell you about events that I know about. Um, we we have about four free things that we do during the week. One of them is called the Wholesaler Mastermind. I do a call every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Just talk about a, a different topic centered around wholesaling, but we take a deep dive. We just had we had a great call. We had 100 people on the call last Thursday talking about free foreclosures, and we're going to do part two of that. So it was a great call. My uh, my buddy Bob was in there, and we're talking about marketing to pre-foreclosures, which is can be really um, a very lucrative um, niche to to tap into. Um, and then we do open office hours and a bunch of other stuff. So anyway, if you're interested in that, again, I'm not trying to sell you nothing. It's just uh, a way to tap into uh, um, what we're doing. And then, you know, I'll probably send out something about JJ's uh, picnic. I know today I sent out something about this call. Um, if Pace is like doing something special, I'll usually send out something about that. So, you know, usually about an email a week or so, just just updating you on all the things that I'm aware of that are going on in not only in my world, but also in the greater world of all my friends um, that are like cool events that I want to make you aware of. So, yeah. So anyway, if you're not already part of that, I highly recommend like just click on that lawnsofpartners.com back to us, Vincent, and just, you know, connect up with me and um oh. You know, and and again, I do a lot of free education stuff during the week, just trying to help people out, trying to get help people, you know, get more deals going and accelerate their business. So, great, thank you very much. So, Vince, we're we're, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, breakout rooms, but really quick, I want okay. as, as we tie things up, I just really want to thank you again for coming on, man. This 
great content. We got to hear some of your backstory and who you are. And, and, um, and I think that's the real gold is the, the individual that you are, not just a real estate investor, but just the person. And um, can't wait till my new house is done so I can have you and Ann come down for a visit. I know, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to awesome. it too, let me tell you. I'm going to ask you, what's the best way to reach you? I would say uh, probably to message me on Facebook. So this is your Facebook page. Messaging you on Facebook is a prob probably the best way for people to reach you. Right. Okay. And then you also have Instagram though, right? And they can also, they can message me, DM me on Instagram as well. Okay. And, they, and again, same same name, same face. This is awesome. Lonzapartners.com would be then this page. Right. Uh-huh. Great. So, you know, we've got this on the recording now for the YouTube channel. Anybody wants to follow up with Vince, those will, those will be the best ways to connect with him. Um, if you guys want to connect with me, it'd be jjzzian.com, my website, and message me, call me, text me if you want to. You got my phone number. I've said it eight times today, but it's 818-683-4047. Um, Vince, I got one last question before we go to the breakout rooms. You know, I've got a networking group, and I talk about networking all the friggin' time to where I become the talking head, you know. Uh, but, you know, you're renowned in the real estate investment community, especially for sub two. People know your name across the country. Uh, every education platform has a Facebook page for their community. Mm -hmm. Sub two, Astro, Gator, everything. Mm -hmm. And every community has brand new investors and experience as well as seasoned investors coming in every week. Mm -hmm. that are now coming to use social media, particularly Facebook, as a business tool for the first time. Yeah. For all these investors coming into social media, predominantly Facebook, since it also owns Instagram, Meta, what is the importance of networking to the success of the real estate investor's business? And what is the importance of joining a group like mine, a networking group, to the success of the in real estate investors business, whether they be inexperienced or experienced. Yeah. I mean, networking people always ask me like, what's your number one marketing tool? And my answer is always networking. It's probably like the most valuable thing that I do on a day-to-day -day basis um, in, in um, real estate, in, in the business. Right. And like joining a community like yours is a great opportunity um, to network. I mean, you are someone who really facilitates people networking together. I mean, we were at the beginning of the call and you were like saying, Hey, I want, you know, you to call this person up, you know, you're matching people up, right? I think you matched somebody up with Pansy and, um, and other people. So, you know, this is how you grow. This is how you learn. This is how you build relationship, these relationships. I mean, I can't, I mean, literally on a daily basis, like yesterday, we, I forgot, we got some property, um, under contract in Birmingham, Alabama, right? And then like my team is saying like, okay, who do we know in Birmingham? And then I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Like I have a relationship with this person because they have a real estate insurance company and they're also investors. And so, you know, and then, you know, and then somebody was asking me, who do we know in this, you know, in this, um, in this market. And I was like, yeah, I know this guy, right? Cause he's a real estate educator. And I met him at a meetup, right? I met him at a, at a conference. I met him like, and then I was on another zoom call and it was like, somebody came into the call and they were talking about a guy who was looking for properties in, in another market. And, and we had a property in that we had, he was, he was in two markets. He was in um, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas and Memphis, Tennessee. And we actually had a deals in both of those cities so i was like so anyway, the point is it's like the networking every day every day day in day out and we jj we still have like i still have a whole part of our business that is totally centered around social media totally centered around facebook instagram and you know it's the lonzo method right really that's what the lonzo method is at the heart of the lonzo method it's using social media to network together with wholesalers to work on doing deals. I mean, we're, we said we're going to do a whole nother Zoom, I mean, a whole nother, you know, podcast on that in the future, which we will. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I I now have a VA that does nothing but helps me with the social media. I have a couple people on that. I now have a, like a full-time, what I call a relationship manager who just does nothing but reaches out to all the people that we're connecting with on social media to just build relationships. So yeah. 
it's 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 essential and being part of a facebook group like what what jj has is um is a great way to network with people you know we use those um those facebook groups all the time to just network with together with people um what and i know jj is very open to you know you know being in there and being like hey i'm lo I'm looking for this i'm looking to connect up with somebody that can help me with that so yeah it's a great connection point if you guys are watching on youtube right now please like vince's video please click the little like button please put in the comment section your takeaways what you found valuable informative and and how i can improve and how we can bring you a better product uh, again, you can find Vince through social media platforms of Facebook and Instagram, as well as the link he shared earlier for uh, lonsofpartners.com forward slash Vince. Um, again, I want to thank you guys for being on. If you guys are on the call right now, do not go away. We're going to go to live breakout rooms, live networking. You can possibly be in a breakout room with Uncle Vince himself. Other than that, Vince, we'll see everybody else out there in YouTube world and virtual networking and uh you and I aren't going anywhere, so they'll, they'll see us, you know, as we as time goes on. Okay, sounds good for sure. Thanks for joining us, everybody.